So what's the process to get that out? The process of this is, just is it just it? one? Just one, yeah. Okay, that's good. The process of this is you pull it out with tweezers and I bit <laughs> Hi everybody, I'm Nick with Nysis, and today we're in Tucson, Arizona. This is the scorpion capital of the US. This is the Sonoran Desert. And so we're gonna go out tonight with, uh, with some black lights and see if we can look around. We might see other critters, who knows. We're gonna have a good time and maybe find some things to show you up close. Yeah, termites, right here. Yeah, these are, what do you guys have out here? Subterranean termites? Yeah. Yeah, a little worker at the end of the tongs. And then a little bit of mud tube structure up on the bottom of this rock as well. But yeah, everywhere there's wood, there's termites, and that includes, uh, that includes out here. Dude, this black light stuff is sick. And oh, he was in the bark. He was in the bark I was ripping off. You know what even the coolest part is? That sting <laughs> hurts every bit as much as the big one. Wow. A little bit of self-medicine here. <sighs> There's one. <sighs> Show the camera that thing. Yeah, so they're called jumping choya cactus. They don't actually jump on you, but all of those tips are hooked and barbed. And then there's break points, these super thin break points. This thing, the moment it hooked onto me, this broke off and then it hangs on whatever poor animal gets stuck by it and then transferred to some other place in the desert and then it drops on the floor and then starts a new cactus right there. But, but to keep things from wanting to get stuck by it, um, it's, those spines all have a toxin on them. Well, it's really like a mucus and, and that, that mucus burns like a lot. Can you feel it right now? Oh yeah. Oh, like it, it feels like fire right oh. there. Yeah, it feels like a little bee sting. Brutal. But, which All right, um, so don't go that way. No, no. And I didn't even find a scorpion for it. It like wasn't worth it. <laughs> Brutal. Oh well. I'm I'm glad. I'm glad that happened though, because we were talking about that. That's good TV right there. <laughs> Over here, there it is. That. <laughs> I didn't even look up. I was too focused looking down here. And it was right here, so Oof. I stood up into this. So super aggressive bush yep. called the choya? Yep, jumping choya. Jumping choya. Jumping choya. Luckily it's not jumping now. No, no, and it'll, I mean the myth was that it jumped, it jumped onto you, but that's just because you barely touch it and it's in. If I were a scorpion, this is, this is where I'd be hiding. Somewhere kind of stuck in between before I reach under with my big stingable hand. Let's see what we got here. Okay, a couple spiders, not quite what we're looking for. There's actually a lot of, oh, hey, check this out. He's, he's probably cold, so he might not move too fast. There we go. Hey, buddy. So this is a Mediterranean house gecko. There we go, here, so he doesn't glow, but I've got a headlamp. So this is, a, I think it's a Mediterranean house gecko. This is a, if it is, this is an invasive species that has just shown up pretty much everywhere that, that humans do, although its coloring is a little bit darker, so I'm not gonna guarantee that, but a house gecko is a great guess, regardless of wherever it's from. These little guys just hang around neighborhoods and they love hanging out by little light fixtures, like the ones that are off of your garage. And then they'll sit there, wait for a moth to come by, and then just nail it. And since I was using a black light, I didn't even see him at first because he's got patterning that looks exactly like this dirt. I didn't even see him until I saw a little shine off his cute little eyes. Very cool. I'm gonna put you right back, and then you can go back to taking your chilly nap. This this place is money. I'm 
I'm checking, I'm checking something else under here. All right. Got nothing under that one. Flip. Ooh, okay. So, tons of spider webbing and a bunch of foam material. No, no scorpions, but there's definitely, th that almost, okay, so remember yesterday we saw those, what I thought were droppings? Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't know if scorpion droppings glow, but the areas that we found those two scorpions had so much of that teeny little speckles of stuff that glows. Oh, <laughs> here we go. All right. All right, Chaz. We found what we were looking for. Come on in. And there are two scorpions, the larger of which is down here. Going off of the tail, I'm gonna guess striped bark scorpions. There's a nice big one right there. And now we're gonna try to get them to a place where we can see them easier. Here, if I could, this'll work. There we go. Poke your tail up. Get a little bit upset for me, please. Okay, come on. Gotcha. There we go. Excellent. Okay. There's one. And now this one. If I could get this one. And the camera isn't picking up the, the UV light. It looks like just regular white. Really? Kind of cool light, yeah. So it just looks like a cool light, and then the, is the stor scorpion still glowing? Oh, yeah. On the camera? Oh, that's sick. Yeah, they're super bright. Look at him go. Oh, wow. Yeah, he's... Yeah, that's a big one. He is a bit bigger. If I can get him to just crawl onto my hand, I'll be happy with that. No way. Okay, come on. Come on, bud. All right. Go, go that way. Go that way. No, not that way. Okay. So, my philosophy with handling these things is that for the most part, they're not trying, they're not gonna be trying to, to sting me, but if they see my hand as just a floor to walk into, then we're okay. Here we go, oh, this is gonna go great, there we go. Cause then, I don't need to pick them up hard, I don't need to take them off, and that is a striped bark scorpion. There we are. This is one of the bigger ones that I've ever held. I found a couple of these. Oklahoma has striped bark scorpions as well. And on the Schmidt Pain Index, these rank, these rank pretty high. Pull your, your light back a little bit. Here, let, let me get a... Not gonna kiss it. So these scorpions, for most of the year, especially on the especially in the warmer times, they're just ambush predators. Like these ones that were hanging out in this fire pit here. They're just ambush predators. They want to find a nice dark place to hide and wait for something small, like a cricket or a big ant. Or something nice and nice that won't put up much of a fight. Oh, I scared him a little bit by having a hard pee come out of my mouth. The pop? The pop, yeah. As you say it again. As I say it again. Pop. Yeah, oh, oh. So, one thing that I'm going to show you later is that underneath these, underneath their belly, they have these two fins that are dragging on my hand right now. And those are vibration sensors. That's how these hear. That's how they find, that's how they know that prey is on the way to them. And... That's also how every time that I said the word pop, he made a reaction. Now, one thing that's nice for me is that it's a little cold out here. It's roughly 55, 60 degrees. And because of that, this is moving nice and slow across my hand. Were it warmer, these guys can put on the gas. This place is spooky. I see how like the chupacabra and Bunch of other, bunch of other myths. Oh, that's gorgeous. Rabbit.